May the grace and peace of God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, Trinity Anglican. Isn't that such good news? That even amidst these trying times, we can receive the grace and peace of our Father in heaven. And that holds us amidst the storm. That holds us amidst disappointment. That brings us peace. Family, as most of you know, the coronavirus pandemic has hit new heights in our state. As the cold weather sets in, as we begin to gather together more and more for holidays, this virus is continuing to spread at an, at an ever-increasing rate. And therefore, we continue to lift up our prayers for those impacted by this virus. We lift up our prayers for those that have lost loved ones. We lift up our prayers for those that have lost quality of life as this virus has deeply impacted them physically, even after they've recovered. We lift up prayers for those that have lost jobs. We lift up prayers for our children that are deeply impacted by this in their education as they're seeking to engage online education, homeschooling, or whatever it might be. We lift up our prayers for parents who are trying to teach their children, disciple their children, love their children in an, in an incredibly difficult season. We continue to pray because this pandemic is still going on and we continue to lift up our petitions before our Lord who hears us. However, I also want to give you a couple good words today, a couple words of good news. While we are in the midst of a pandemic, while regulations are going up in our city, I am incredibly encouraged by what I'm seeing at Trinity Anglican. And today I'd like to give you five ways, five ways I am encouraged as your priest by the work I am seeing the Holy Spirit do in and among this community. First, I am incredibly encouraged to hear stories of new life in Jesus Christ. Young people are being evangelized with the gospel and coming to saving faith in Jesus amidst this pandemic. Some of our refugees have expressed an interest in growing in their relationship with our Lord. And some of them have even expressed that they are Christians. I am profoundly encouraged by this. Family, we are a people sent on mission into the world. We are a people who are called to make the name of Jesus great. And a pandemic has not stopped that. In the midst of these difficult times, the Lord Jesus Christ is drawing people into relationship with himself through members of our church. And that brings me incredible joy. Second, just last week, two teams were trained to begin mentoring relationships with two families from Afghanistan. Our refugee ministry is still moving forward. Our refugee ministry is still bearing fruit. Please pray for these teams and these families that have come here from Afghanistan that they might experience the transforming power of the gospel. We are going to commission these teams in the coming weeks, but in the meantime, please be lifting them up in prayer for fruitful engagement that leads to Jesus. Third, and some of you have noticed this, each Sunday, I see new faces. Every single Sunday, there are new people that walk through the doors of our church. Even last week, when we moved inside, we completely changed our location. There was a snowstorm. We still had new people coming. Now, numerical growth is not all we care about. We care about growing deeply with Jesus, and yet there's still a gift to it. It's still a remembrance that God is doing something in this community. And when I talk to people that are first-time visitors or that as they come back multiple times, and some of them have even become members of the church, as I talk to them, what they often say is this. One, I was drawn to this church because you preached the gospel. And two, the second time I came, people remembered my name. People looked actually excited to see me. I felt welcome. Trinity, continue in this. Continue to welcome people as they're seeking a community where they can grow with their brothers and sisters and their love of Jesus Christ. I am profoundly encouraged by you. Don't grow weary in welcoming. I know that masks make it difficult, 
just assume that the person that you think that you don't recognize, just assume that they're new and welcome them, them into the church. The Lord is working there. Fourth, the ministry of church planting has not stopped amidst this pandemic. It's only sped up. As some of you know, Daniel Coffey has been hired to be our new church planting apprentice. And Jesse Blaine, who will start mid-November, has been hired to be our new planting resident. And the prayer is that they will be sent out within a year to plant a new church in the city of Denver. Continue to pray for them. Continue to intercede for them. That they would have wisdom as they seek to gather a team to go somewhere in our city to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And this last one is, is kind of special. We never set out to be a church that had a ton of kids. Uh, that wasn't what I set out to do. And yet, it's what the Lord has done in our church. And it's an incredible gift. We are blessed by the children of our church. And as some of you know, by the time Easter rolls around, we will have 12 new people in our church. We are profoundly honored by this gift that we get to disciple these little ones to know Jesus all of their days, to come into a saving faith with him, to recognize that they cannot save themselves, they cannot be sufficient in themselves, that just like a little baby nursing upon his or her mother, we all need to be cradled in the arms of our Lord. This is a gift that we get to enjoy as a church. New life, both through conversions and new life through new people joining our church through birth. Now, I have a, a six announcements I need to make. This is why I made this a video, so you can wa watch it or you can read it, because it's in the email too. But I have six announcements. First, given the new regulations by Tri-County Health and Arapahoe County, we are no longer able to have 100 people in our gymnasium at Bethany E. Free. Now we can only have 50. And what that means is we need you to RSVP with adequate time because now we will only be able to have 25% capacity in our gym, which is, 20, which is 50 people. Now, if you want to come to church and the RSVP list is already full, I need to know it. Please email me. Let me know because if we need to add a third service, we are prepared to do so. However, we do not need to add a third service if it's not needed. If you cannot find a spot to RSVP, let me know so that we can discern if we need to add a third service as a church. Second, due to Tri-County Health regulations, in-person gatherings in homes have been limited to five people from two families. And what that means is that our house church model is no longer an option. I know that's a grief to many of you because you are looking forward to meeting in your homes as you participate in the Eucharist, do the liturgy together, and listen to the message. However, what I want to encourage you is this. Because our indoor gatherings have been downgraded to 50 people in a room that can seat 200, you will have adequate space to spread out in the gym. With everyone with face masks on, with large ceilings, the volume of the space is actually far more likely to be safe than a living room with five to eight people. So please, if you're comfortable, Recognize that now our gym will have much less people and it will be much safer for you when it comes to viral transmission. Third, we are actively seeking a solution. We are actively seeking wisdom on how to engage our children in this time. We recognize that uh, our children need to be discipled in this season. And while we can't have traditional children's ministry, we are also trying to figure out what does it look like to disciple them well and safely in this season. Please be patient with us as we work this out. Our very own Brittany Sherman is leading a team to seek wisdom and discernment on how to do this well. But I also want to encourage you, still the best way to disciple your children is to have practices at home of prayer, of reading your Bible, and active engagement with the Lord. And not only that, but the liturgy is still discipling our children. 
They are still receiving the sacraments on Sunday morning if you're able to attend. They are still being formed by the people of God. Their discipleship is still active. And we also want to encourage you, continue to disciple them on your own. And we will begin to more effectively walk alongside you in that in the future. Fourth, we are going to make our live stream better. For the past few months, we've recognized that uh, Zoom is not an ideal option for streaming an entire service. However, we felt that it was the right thing to do so that you all can connect together. However, we recognize that it might be a better option to combine live streaming and then do Zoom at a separate time so that you all can still connect, but also have a better experience of Sunday morning. Fifth, <clears throat> and this one deeply pains me, almost all social gatherings are going to be canceled. We were going to have a men's chili cook-off this Friday, which I was planning to win. We were going to have a women's bake-off. We were going to have all kinds of things for you to connect together, get to know one another. We know many of you are new and want to form relationships, but we can't legally do it. So what we want to do is continue to encourage you to connect with one another, to check in on one another, to invite one another into your homes within the legal limitations, and to continue to serve one another. And also know that the minute any of these regulations lift, we are going to regather for times to connect and love one another in the future. And finally, at the beginning of the pandemic, I stated that the one ministry that can't be taken from you, whether you're on your deathbed, you're in a prison cell, or you're in a pandemic, is a ministry of devotion and prayer. Please, family, continue to pray. Continue to pray for a lifting of this virus continue to pray for church leadership as we are back in the weeds of trying to make decisions when regulations seem to change every other day. Be with us as we seek the Lord. Seek him yourself. Seek a time every single day to cry out to our Lord who brings us peace. Family, even amidst a pandemic, our Lord is still on the move. Our Lord is still doing a work of drawing people to himself. Our Lord is still doing a work of extending his grace and bringing us peace. If you have any questions or need any clarification, please reach out to me at any time. I'm always available. I love you all very much.